Hey everyone, welcome to my OpenStack tutorial series. I'm Angel with Tech Tutelage, and in this second video, I will show you how to install OpenStack using DevStack repository and how to launch your very first instance on OpenStack. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on the upcoming videos in this OpenStack series. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to post in the comments under the video. I want to start by quickly going over what we did last time, since you need to have all that set up so you can follow along. Long. So last time we went in on my old iMac and we installed VirtualBox. So make sure you have VirtualBox installed. I installed an older version, but if you install the latest version of VirtualBox, that will work as well. On that VirtualBox, we installed a virtual machine that is running Ubuntu server version 22.04 long-term support, since this is the one that's recommended for OpenStack. Then one important thing that we did is we set up a bridge network interface and we set up a static IP during the installation. That way our virtual machine always has the same IP address and is exposed to our local network. We also gave that machine 16 gigs of RAM, which is the minimum required by OpenStack and four CPUs. Now, all that said, I'm gonna continue and show you how to install the OpenStack. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this away from my screen and I'm gonna go ahead and open my terminal window and I will SSH to my virtual machine. And if you remember from last time, my IP is 192.168.05 and here I'm going to enter my password. Go ahead and clear my screen. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my root user. We set up a password for that user last time. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the following command. With this command, we will create a user called stack and we're going to set a home directory for that user up stack go ahead and run it then we need to run this command to ensure that the home directory for the stack user has executable permissions for all this is needed because sometimes the default permissions can cause issues during the deployment and go ahead and run it oh and i'm missing the k at the end of the command there you go that looks better now then with the following command we're gonna add our stack user to the sudoers file and i'm gonna post all these commands in the description under the video so you can just copy and paste and then with the next command we're gonna switch to our stack user and we will move into stacks home directory. And I'm just gonna run PWD just to confirm, make sure that we're in its home directory and opt stack. With the following command, we're gonna clone the OpenStack dev stack repository. And then we're gonna have to go into the dev stack directory. And then here we're gonna create a file called local.com. So we can run nano local.com. And in this file, we're gonna put the bare minimum required in order to start the OpenStack installation. So it will be this five lines. Again, I'll put these lines in the comment section under the video. And once you have this in the file, you can go ahead and save it and close it. And once you have all that done, you can go ahead and run the following command to get the installation process started. This will take about 20 minutes, so you don't have to sit and stare at it, but just kind of look at it every once in a while, make sure that it's not throwing any errors or anything. All right, and once the installation have completed, hopefully it's successful, we didn't see any errors. And if it was, you're probably gonna see your screen is gonna look something like mine, and you should be able to go ahead and access your Horizon dashboard. So to do that, you can come and get the link from right here. So that will be the IP address of my server for by slash dashboards. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this link and I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in my browser. One thing to notice here is uh, you're gonna have this default users, admin and demo, and the password for both users is secret. So I'm gonna open my browser and I'm gonna paste this address here. I'm gonna hit return and that will connect to my virtual machine that's running on my virtual box. And here I'm gonna log in as an admin and the password would be secret. I'll go ahead and click on sign in and that will bring me in my Horizon desktop. So from here, uh, you're gonna notice you will have a couple of projects. So you're gonna have this demo project and an admin project. I wouldn't mess with an admin project as OpenStack uses that project. And this one is more for like a general allocation of resources and settings of your OpenStack. But you can definitely mess around with this demo project and just delete it when you are ready to set up your own project. So the last thing that I'm gonna show you today is just how to start an instance just to confirm that OpenStack is actually working. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this demo project. And in here, I'm gonna go under instances 
And then here in instances, just start a new instance. All you have to do is click on this launch instance button. You can give your instance a name. I'm going to call it test. And actually, I want to start two instances. So there you go. I'm going to start two of them. And you can click next. We're going to build our instance from an image so you can leave it as an image. Delete volume on instance delete. I like to check this on yes. That way, when I delete the instances, the volumes get automatically deleted. And then here is when you're going to pick what image you're going to use to build your instance. Since we just built this OpenStack, we only have one image of this Cirrus Linux, which is a very small, tiny Linux. And it's put here just as a demo, just so you can see how it works. Um, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to upload your own cloud image and how to start an instance with it. So for now, I'm going to use this one. So you can click on this up arrow here to allocate it. And then you can go ahead and click next and a flavor here. You can choose the size of your instance, basically like the hardware that you're going to put on it. So I'm going to pick the smallest one with a one CPU, 128 megs of Ram and one gig of disk. And you can set up a custom ones of those, but that's the subject of another video. So I'm going to go ahead and click on an up arrow here and then I'm going to scroll down and click on next and the networks here uh, in this demo project, we have networks already preset for us. I'm going to pick this private network and then I'm going to go click next network forks. There's nothing you have to do in this one security groups. This is the only group that is in this demo project. So that's our only choice. We don't need a key pair since this instance comes with a username and password. So nothing to worry about this. I'll cover this in my next video here. You can push a customization scripts. We're not going to do that in this video. So we're just going to skip that server groups, nothing to do scheduler, nothing. And at this point you can just click launch instance. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button. And you can see these two instances are starting to be built now. So it automatically named them test one and test two. It assigned them IPs on the private network that we chose and is building them right now. I'm just going to quickly show you here uh, network topology. You can see that we have one public network and then uh, we have a router and then we have this shared network and this private network that we put our two instances on. So I'm going to go back here to compute to see if those two instances are ready. And it seems like both instances are running to check their status. What you can do is you can just click on an instance here like this and then go and click on log and that will show you the current screen of the instance. So it seems like it's still booting up. Uh, usually you see here the login screen when the instance is ready. Another thing you can do is you can just click on console and that will give you a console access to that instance. I guess I can keep on the screen here until it's ready so you can just see that login screen. And there you go. Now the instance is fully loaded. And as you can see, I'm propped with a login screen in that console. So to log into this instance, the username will be Cirrus, C-I-R-R-O-S. And the password is Go Cubs Go. And there we go. I'm an instance host name and you can see that this is instance test one. Now, if I go back here, instance test one is with IP 10.0.0.52. Test two is with 10.0.0.13. So I'm going to go ahead and just ping this instance just to see if these two are communicating with each other. I'm going to say ping 10.0.0. Oh my goodness. What was it? I forgot already. Let me go back and look 13 10.0.0.13. And as you can see, the two instances can talk to each other as they're on the same network. There you go. And I think this is it for today. I hope this video was useful to you. As I mentioned earlier, in the next video, I'll show you how to upload the Debian cloud image on OpenStack. I'm also going to show you how to configure your networking so you can access your OpenStack instances from other machine on your LAN network. And again, don't forget to subscribe so you get notified when my next video is available. As always, if you have any questions or comments, post under the video. Thank you for watching.